So you're a student, but you're spending a lot of time studying and going to school, but you want to make money with a side hustle. Well, you're in luck because during high school and college, I tried just about every side hustle out there. And on top of that, over the last three to four years, I've spent over $100,000 on various different freelancing sites, paying people who are doing side hustles. So I've been on both sides of the equation and I know which side hustles are kind of a waste of time and which ones you can actually make some really good money with. And most of the videos that you see here on YouTube are basically just copy paste version of things that people read on blogs where they haven't actually tried the side hustles themselves. And it's kind of just the same side hustles over and over again. So I hope I'm going to share some really good ones with you today and ones that you have never heard about. And all I ask in exchange is that you very gently tap that like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first one I want to talk about is one that I don't hear anybody else talking about on YouTube, and that is independent medical courier. So as many of you know, I come from a medical background. I was actually a pharmacist. And over the last few years, this is a career that has gotten even better than before. Now, everybody knows what happened in the last few years with the whole global pandemic thing. I'm not going to say the words because then this video is going to get demonetized. But there are certain types of medical tests that are very time sensitive. And when somebody takes the test, it has to be processed in a short amount of time. And a lot of the time you might take these tests at a pharmacy, for instance. Instance. And it's not just those types of tests. You can also do, you know, lab reports, medical records, medical documents, medical supplies, medications, etc. But time sensitive tests and time sensitive specimens are the ones that are really profitable. And basically, you'll come, you'll pick up some sort of box, and you'll take it from point A to point B. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I can't do this because I have classes during the day. And actually, that's the best possible time to do it because a lot of the time people don't want to work during the evenings and they don't want to work on the weekends. And so this is when medical couriers get paid the most. So the way that you would get into this is you would look up the keyword courier on your local job boards. So for instance, you could look it up on Craigslist or indeed.com. And then you would start applying to these jobs on a part-time basis. And I really recommend that you apply to several of them. Now, typically you can make about 35 to $40 an hour as a medical courier. And all you need is a driver's license, a car and car insurance. So the reason that I know about this career is because I would always chat with the people who would come and pick up the lab specimens when I was working in the pharmacy. And me being a YouTuber who talks about making money and being super nosy like I am, I would ask them how much they were getting paid. And I was shocked when they told me how much. I mean, these people were making over $100,000 a year. So here's a comment that I saw on YouTube. Move from Uber to courier work in 2020. I work all the time. I pick up tests and deliver blood from the Red Cross. Work is out there, but it starts with one route. Do a good job and they'll give you more. My Thai girlfriend does it too. Can't speak English well, but six figures. So this guy and his girlfriend are both making six figures doing this medical courier work. So yeah, super, super good opportunity for a side hustle or even full-time work. So if you're somebody who's considering doing like Postmates or Uber or some sort of delivery thing, do this instead. Next one on the list is going to be event planners or anybody that is associated with event planners. So whether this is a marriage, a birthday, a bar mitzvah, a gender reveal, some sort of party or event that a lot of people are going to go to, there is a ton of money in event planning. Now, you can be the actual person that plans and coordinates the event if that's what you want to do, or you can partner with somebody who plans and coordinates events and do a very specific skill set. So what do I mean by this? Well, I'll give you an example. Back when I was going to college, I dated an Indian girl for three years. And if you're familiar with Indian weddings, they're usually three to seven days long. So there were people in my class that did event planning for Indian weddings specifically. So you can see this is a very niche sort of event planning. And then there were people who got even more niche than that, and they were actually photographers for Indian weddings. And then there was one person that even went one step further, and they were a hand photographer for Indian weddings. Okay, so if you're familiar with a lot of different Indian weddings, they get the henna done on their hands. And he basically got really good at taking photographs of the bride and the groom holding hands with the henna and doing hand photography. So he partnered with event planners and they would contact him whenever they needed somebody to take those types of photos. And he was making really, really good money doing this. He was making over $50 an hour. So whether you want to do event planning yourself or you want to do one small aspect of event planning, you can make amazing money from this. With the Indian wedding example, for instance, one of my classmates, she actually did event planning and she told me sometimes they would spend over $700,000 on a single wedding. So imagine
imagine if you were able to even get 5% of that $700,000, well, that's $35,000. So yeah, event planning and anything associated with event planning, especially if you find a specific niche, can be incredibly lucrative. Next one on the list is going to be coaching, consulting, and tutoring. And this is one where in college, I made over $100 an hour. So this is one where you want to take an inventory of things that you're already good at because you've done them a lot, you just have a lot of experience with them, or things that you are naturally talented at. So for instance, you could be an athlete, maybe you played baseball all throughout your childhood, or maybe you're a musician, you played the violin for 10 years, or maybe you're really good at dancing, or you studied really hard for the ACT or the SAT when you were in high school and you had a good score. So you really want to make an inventory of all the things that you've accomplished, all the things that you're good at, or all the things that you're naturally talented at. And then you basically find people to teach those things too. So if you're naturally talented at math, you could become a math tutor. If you're really good at baseball, you might get hired by some rich parent to do one-on-one -on -one lessons with their child. In my particular case, I scored really well on this test called the PCAT during college. This is the pharmacy college admissions test. And the reason I scored really well on this test is not because I'm super smart. It's because I found the best resources for the test. So there's a ton of different resources out there for the PCAT and I found the best one by far. And I did that through trial and error. I tried a bunch of different ones out and I found the best one that basically, I don't know if this guy had like some kind of inside connection, but the practice test that he gave, I swear, it's almost like question for question. A lot of them were almost exactly the same as the PCAT. So I ended up scoring extremely extremely well on this test and people actually started coming to me when people heard what I scored and asking me to tutor them. And at first I did it for free, then I started charging like $50 an hour, then I started charging $80 an hour, and eventually I got to over $100 an hour. And basically I would just tell them all the resources that I used and how I studied for the test. So this is another one where you wanna find a niche. You don't just wanna be like, oh, I can teach anybody anything, I can tutor you on any subject. You wanna find a specific niche, and then you wanna post on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, something along those lines, and see what people take you up on your offer. Next on the list is being a social media influencer or somebody who is a virtual assistant for a social media influencer. So everybody knows how much money you can make on YouTube or blogging or even on TikTok, Instagram, etc. But what almost nobody talks about is almost all YouTubers have either contractors that they work with or people that they hire full time to help them with their channels. And editing YouTube videos is way different than editing other types of videos. So YouTube video editing, for instance, is a very very unique skill set. And same thing with other types of videos like TikTok, etc. Same thing with doing research and writing scripts for YouTube videos. Same thing with making thumbnails on YouTube. That's way different than just becoming a graphic designer. It is a unique skill set that takes time to get good at. So if you can get good at one of these skills and you can save some YouTuber like 5, 10, 15, 20 hours per week, they are probably gonna pay you very well for that. So depending on the skill that you do, you can easily make like 15 to $20 per hour. All right, so the next one on the list is one that I do hear a lot of people talking about, but it's honestly such a good one that I wanted to mention it in this video, and that is pet sitting or house sitting. So this is one that's pretty self-explanatory. Somebody goes out of town and they need somebody to take care of their house and their pets. And you might do some really basic things like just making sure that the pool filter gets changed or something along those lines. And if you're a student that's gonna be studying anyways during that time, this might be a phenomenal option for you because you can just go to their house, take care of it and study while you're there. So rover.com is a really good option for finding gigs like this. I think you also have this option on TaskRabbit. But yeah, this is another one where people out there that made like multi six figure businesses by becoming dog walkers, taking care of people's houses and taking care of their pets. The next one on the list is one that I did for years and I believe this is actually the first way that I ever made money and that is flipping items. Okay, so this is probably the oldest business in all of human history. And that is you find an item, you buy it for a certain amount of money, and then you flip it, you sell it for more. So I did this for years. I did it with a bunch of different items, phones, iPods, iPads, bikes. I would find a really good deal at a garage sale or Craigslist, or sometimes people would just like throw TVs away and then I would buy it or I'd collect it and I'd sell it for sometimes double, triple or quadruple the money. There was one time I bought a car for $600 and I ended up flipping it for over 2000. So yeah, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. There's entire websites and YouTube channels dedicated to teaching you how to do this. This is one of those skills that's never gonna go away. Um, it's highly recommended that you find a niche 
niche, something that you're really good at and you're really knowledgeable about, and then just buy and sell things. And in terms of how much you can make with this one, it really varies, but you could probably make well over 30 to $50 an hour. Next one on the list is going to be a social media manager. Now, if you're somebody who spends a lot of time on social media already, like you're browsing YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, et cetera, there are companies out there that will actually hire you to respond to comments, for instance, on that social media platform. So a company might hire you to respond to comments on Twitter, for instance. Now, as you can imagine, this does require a really good knowledge of the company itself. And it also requires you to kind of just have to know what's okay to say and what's okay to not say. So you basically have to be very brand friendly. It is a skill set that you have to learn. There's also other types of social media management type jobs that you probably have never heard about. One of them is link building. And this is basically where you work for a blog and you reach out to other blogs to try to get backlinks to your blog. Now, this is actually like an underground secret billion dollar industry because when you get backlinks to your blog, that means the blog is going to rank higher on Google. And that means more people are going to choose to buy the products and, you know, go to your blog articles. And then they're going to make a lot of AdSense money from that. So you're going to be outreaching to other blogs. And in some cases, you might even be writing guest posts, which you will then use to link back to your blog. And this is a position that I'm currently trying to hire for in the next six months or so because I'm launching my blog. And you can easily start off at 15 to $35 an hour. Speaking of me trying to hire, another position that I've been trying to hire for a very long time is a freelance writer. And that is the next one on the list. Now, this is one where you can work for a lot of different types of businesses. For instance, you could write blog articles. And it really helps if you write blog articles that you have some knowledge of SEO or search engine optimization. You could also be a freelance writer that writes copy. Copy is basically selling using the written word. You could be a freelance writer that specializes in email marketing. You could also be a freelance writer that specializes in helping people to write YouTube scripts. And this is another one where you want to figure out what your specialty is and what your niche is. So for instance, maybe you are a freelance YouTube script writer in the personal finance space. You could probably help someone out like me who does a lot of these types of videos. And you would basically help them out with the research as well as writing the script itself. And you can easily make over $30 an hour, sometimes much more than this, if you become an expert and you get recognized in that niche. Next one on the list is going to be physical labor. This is another one that I did for years and it is so lucrative. So for instance, recently I moved and I hired somebody on TaskRabbit for $35 an hour. And then after I tipped them, they ended up making over $50 an hour. And they basically were just helping me to box things up and move them. Super, super, super profitable. I also used to do this in high school and college myself, and I would make around $50 an hour as well. It does help if you have your own truck or van. But with that being said, you don't need to have a truck and van. You can very easily rent a truck from the Home Depot for like $20 a day. And you don't have to just do moving. You can help people with gardening, painting, interior decoration, etc. For instance, when I was setting up my YouTube studio, I hired somebody and paid them about $40 an hour to help me set up the studio. She had a really good eye for interior decoration and she helped me make the studio look awesome. I also knew somebody in Las Vegas who was a pastor for a church. And while he was trying to get that church off the ground to the point where it was, you know, self-sustaining and making enough money, he actually started a moving company and he was making over $100,000 a year. And then he used the funds from his moving company to help start his church. So yeah, this one isn't very scalable, but it is easy, easy money. Next one on the list is probably the best business model online. It's so unbelievably easy to learn, and that is affiliate marketing. And this is one where you're probably not going to make much money right off the bat, but it also has the highest ceiling out of all the ones on this list. So basically, the way affiliate marketing works is you refer a product to somebody else, and if they choose to buy that product, you get a percentage of the sale. So you could refer a product to somebody that costs $100, and if they buy that product, maybe you get 10% or $10. So we all know how expensive of books are in college. You know, you might have to buy a book and it costs like $500 or $700 to buy the book as well as the online program that goes with it. But there are networks out there where you can buy basically the same book, but the year before, and maybe it costs $50 or less. And so one of my friends back in college signed up with an affiliate network. And whenever people were complaining about how much their books cost, he would just mention, hey, you can get this book for like $50. Then he would send them the referral link and he would get a small cut of whatever they spent. So this is one one way you can do affiliate marketing without even having an audience. But with that being said, if you can build a big audience, affiliate marketing is just a phenomenal business model. You don't have to worry about hiring people, 
storing products, creating a really good product or service that somebody wants to use, doing customer service or anything like that, all you have to do is get people to click your links. It is seriously one of the easiest business models out there. Now, affiliate marketing is actually a type of digital marketing, and that is the next one on the list. And digital marketing is not only something that you can do as a side hustle, but you can actually do it full time. And it's one of the best entry level careers that you can get into without a college degree and without any experience. And this is another one where you want to find a niche and if you do it as a freelancer you can easily make $40 an hour or more if you get your first entry-level job you'll probably start off around 20 to $25 an hour now I've talked about this before on the channel and I've actually interviewed a bunch of people who have gotten into digital marketing and the best way for you to get into this in my opinion is to check out the free masterclass from my friend Seth I'm gonna put that down in the description below you can also check out the playlist of different people that have gotten jobs in digital marketing using Seth's online course. So definitely check out that playlist right here. Gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. as well as if you have any good side hustles that you've done that you wanna mention, or you've done these side hustles and you wanna tell everybody how much money you made. Definitely comment all that stuff down below, and I'll see you next time.